Google Pixel 4 XL first impressions. That video is coming up right now. Let's go. So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology and welcome back to the channel, Google Pixel 4 XL first impressions. Now I do wanna disclose right away that this is a gift from Google, working with Team Pixel on this one. Um, I told you I would disclose with you anytime I get a phone, but this is not a paid review, this is not a sponsored review, this is simply a gift from Google and I am not paid to say anything. So everything here is my own impression, my own opinion. Now, first of all, the Google Pixel 4 XL is going to run you right around 899 to start. That's 64 gigabytes and 128 gigabytes is going to put you at 999. Okay, guys, so let's talk about my first impressions with the body. So the Pixel 4 XL, the first thing I thought when I pulled it out of the box is a couple of things. First of all, I like the weight of it. It's around 193 grams, so it's got a nice heft to it. It's not super heavy, but not super light either. So it didn't feel cheap. Now the back has got an etched glass feel to it. You know, it doesn't pick up a lot of fingerprints. So that feels nice as well. I do like the way the back of this phone does look. You can see just a G Google logo down there, nothing else. Now up here at the top, or not, not the top, the full size, this is an aluminum frame, but it feels kind of like a polycarbonate plastic around the edges. But I do gotta say that in terms of the curved corners, I do like this, and a flat display, I also like that as well. Um, the bezel though, I'm not so sure how much I like that design choice, but I do like it better than the notch of last year. I think it is better than that. But because so many phones have been stretching the display, so far, this kind of seems like it's not the best design on the market, but I will say one thing, they do have some of the best tech for face unlock in here, although we'll talk about how people have been able to unlock this phone with their eyes closed. We'll talk about that later in a minute. Overall though, the body feels more function over form, so not the flashiest look out there. You could see that camera bump right there, not too thick, not too protruding, more function over form. It feels nice to use more than it feels like super beautiful to look at. So that's kind of what I'm getting on my first take with this phone. So let me talk about my impressions on the display. First of all, I really do like how Google put a 1440p pan on here, period. It's just a really sharp display and that's a good thing. Although some people will look at this and think that it's similar to pretty much maybe the Pixel 3a, it's not, it's a sharper display. Now also, I do like that this is 90 hertz. Now one thing I will say though is that it's not always in 90 hertz. If you go to display settings here, go to advanced, you can see that there's a smooth display option which you could turn on and off, but if you really do want this to always be in 90 hertz, like all the time, you need to force it to 90 hertz in developer options. This actually feels smoother than an iPhone display, which has seemed to be the display that always felt the smoothest. Pixel feels even smoother than that when it is in the 90 hertz mode. So I, I'm gonna force it, I'm gonna leave it in there the whole time. I don't care about the battery drain that's gonna happen on there because I want this smooth feel all the time. Flat display makes it pretty functional, doesn't get in the way, no accidental touches, things like that. I will say though that that bezel is definitely noticeable when watching a video in landscape. You can just see it protruding off the top there. So that's not the best look I feel, but if you do play a video here, you can see it right there. If you pinch it back down, then it doesn't really bother me, but still, you definitely notice it when watching video. So I don't really like that too much, but still the display itself, the actual quality of the panel is pretty good. And it has this ambient EQ mode right here. If I go to advanced again, which dynamically adjusts the display based on surrounding light levels. So it can kind of adapt the display depending on the lighting you're in. I gotta say on my first impressions, this is not the brightest display I've seen of the year. Um, it seems like every year the Pixel doesn't have the brightest display and this one's no different. So if you're listening to this Google, I would like to see you get Get this brightness cranked up on the next Pixel device. So software, the latest version of Android 10 here, and I gotta say, I'm just loving the software here for the Pixel. It's super 
lightweight. I mean, I mean, it's the purest version of what Google has for you with Android. And when you use the Pixel, you just feel like you have the most cohesive, you know, software experience for an Android device, meaning hardware and software going together. And uh, this one just really nails it there. Now, this is not the most feature packed phone when it comes to special features, but when it comes to a Google experience, the most pure Android experience you're going to get. Yes, there's a few new features in here, like the all new face unlock in this Pixel 4 XL. And in Android 10, you have the ability to swipe back like that. You also have the new gestures, which with this 90 hertz display is just super smooth. So gestures here, you can go back, you can do Google Assistant from the side. We have live captions on here as well. If I'm watching something, you can actually just hit the volume down in anything. Click that right there. And you could see live caption right there kind of reading to you anything that's going on the display so that's a nice thing as well i'll cover the software a little bit more in depth in the full review but first impressions of it super smooth android 10 it's a pixel you you kind of know what you're getting here that pure android experience with software updates to come very frequently okay so performance with this 90 hertz display snapdragon 855 a lot of people are going to be like what are you doing google with that six gigabytes of ram let me tell you that's not going to matter here when you have the google phone here running on it because it's going to be very optimized and uh, we'll check out the ram management maybe if you guys want to see a speed test on it but so far this phone feels like a rocket just as i would have expected and uh, i don't think you're gonna have a problem with the performance phones are just not slow these days so do we really got to go on and on of course it would be nice to see eight gigs of ram that's kind of the standard on these flagships but still six gigs of ram is better than the four of the prior pixel which also wasn't a bad performer either so I expect this one to do just fine. So when it comes to storage, I luckily got the 128 gigabytes. This is the 999 model. If you get the 64 gigabytes, that's gonna be 899. Now, you can trade in devices to get the Pixel, so don't think you just gotta pay the full cost of this device. And it's available on pretty much all carriers now, which is pretty great as well. Now, Google's not really including all the high resolution photos and Google photos like before. So once you kind of run out of storage on local device, you might not get everything in high res, but most of those are still going to look fine anyway, even if they're not in the super high quality. Um, still, it, it would have been nice to see that again, but it doesn't look like we're getting that here. So let's talk about this face unlock. Now the setup process was super simple. You just look at the phone, maybe turn your head around just a little bit to kind of scan different angles. And uh, the phone right here, is very fast to unlock. Now I can close my eyes and it still will unlock it right now. Google said they're gonna push out an update to make sure that doesn't happen. But overall, I do like how fast it is. And I like that you can just go right in. You don't have to swipe or nothing like that. So applications are said to be supporting this soon as developers get their updates to use this you know, face unlock up here. So that's gonna be fun to use this just to unlock your applications. But a little bit of concern with that security feature where you can use it with your eyes closed. Once we get that in check, I think we'll be pretty good here. And speaking of security, this does come with a Titan M chip. So this is gonna be one of the most secure Android phones on the market here. Okay guys, so this phone doesn't have the single camera you're used to from a Pixel. We now have two cameras on here. We have ourselves a 12.2 megapixel main camera. Now that's at F17. And then we have a second camera at 16 megapixels F24 and that's telephoto. Now the magic here is gonna happen with computational photography. Um, we'll talk more about the camera a little bit more in depth in the full review. But I gotta say that one of the downsides of this phone is you're not getting a wide angle. That's the trend of 2019. But I will say one thing, a lot of wide angle cameras um, do give you a lot of blurry photos and they're not the best quality right now. So maybe we'll see it when Google could figure out how to use a wide angle with computational photography. But it's kind of a little bit annoying that we didn't get that. I would love to see that in the next phone. But I gotta say so far, I've been taking a couple photos and it's doing its thing as always as a pixel device. It's taking great photos without having to do hardly any work here. You just point, you shoot, and you're getting good quality. Now when you zoom in, you're also getting some of the best quality on the market as well. So if you're the type of person who likes to zoom in, this is gonna be a great phone for you as well. Now, when we go to video settings, you can see when you're in 1080p mode, you can change up to 60 FPS. But if you go to 4K, you're not able to change to 4K 60, which I don't like whatsoever. I wanna see 4K 60 and I don't care 
what anybody says. When you use 4K60, it gives you better quality and you could simply downscale and post to give you an even better quality phone video. And with the size of these sensors, 4K60 is definitely useful. Now, on the front of this phone right here, we do have ourselves a 8 megapixel F2.0 lens, not the dual lens we've seen on the Pixel 3 XL, so, but it's still pretty wide. I, I can say you'll easily be able to get people in this photo, so I don't think it's gonna be a problem with the front. And of course, you can do 30 frames a second video on the front of this camera as well. So my first impressions on camera, I'm gonna give you a lot more samples. This is just the first impressions video. Um, the camera is looking pretty boss, besides the fact it doesn't have a wide angle, the actual results are still gonna be great as always, and the ability to shoot the Milky Way galaxy and you know get all the stars in your photo, that's pretty cool. This is looking like it's gonna be a great photographer's phone who cares more about quality than anything else. If you care about wide angle and landscape and getting a lot of different things in the shot, you're gonna not like this doesn't have a wide angle camera though. So sound and audio. I can say the sound and audio is plenty loud on this phone with stereo speakers bottom and top. Pixels have been having pretty good audio um, when it comes to the speakers externally for a while. No headphone jack on this phone. One thing I will mention is there's no headphones in the box and the wireless Pixel headphones that are on the way are not coming out until 2020. So um, you're gonna have to get yourself or have yourself some Bluetooth headset if you wanna use audio through headphones on this phone, which I'm almost positive most of you already have. So I gotta say, I've had this phone less than 24 hours and the battery life is looking a little bit spotty we have a 3700 milliamp hour not the best I'm seeing so far but it's still a new phone so let it get worked in let the adaptive battery do its thing and I'll give you some updates soon but I will say one thing the standby time is pretty good it's not draining too much in standby so if you're not using it much that'll be good um, in actual usage with the force 90 Hertz on it's not draining too bad I, I, I just think that this is not looking like it's gonna be the best battery life phone of the year but I do feel, based on what I'm seeing so far, that it's gonna get me through a day quite easily. So, so overall, my first impressions are this doesn't look like it's gonna be the best, number one, but number two, it also looks like it might get me through a full day kinda easily. Let's say my first impressions are pretty average battery life so far. Okay, so my overall conclusion on this first impressions are, I like this phone. I, I thought I was not gonna like this Google Pixel 4 XL. When I seen it, I'm like, what are you doing with no wide angle? What are you doing with that design? No, I didn't think I was gonna like this phone, but actually getting this phone and using it, I think it's actually a very good smartphone. And I think if you're the type of person who prefers function over form, you care about how a phone works more than how it looks, this might be the perfect phone for you. This has great software. It has a very comfortable build with this, you know, the curved corners, flat display, no accidental presses. Um, also, yes, we do have a bezel, but you get some pretty good security up there in that bezel. Um, you do have a pretty decent uh, frame around here, aluminum, and while it is a polycarb feel, that gives it more grip so it doesn't slip out of your hand super easy. So I think Google did a great job of making this phone feel very functional, getting out of the way and letting the software do the trick. So you'll be focused. So no, this is not a photogenic phone. If you put it next to a shiny galaxy, that phone might win the beauty pageant contest. But the thing is this, this phone right here is gonna win every day of the week when it comes to software. And because it has a 90 Hertz display, it's gonna feel smoother than most out there with maybe the OnePlus 7 Pro, 7T, matching it in that smooth feel. Anyway, if you guys found his first impressions enjoyable, thumbs up and let me know any questions, comments, concerns you wanna see on this phone for the full review. What are your thoughts on the Pixel 4 and 4XL so far? Are you picking one up? Is this your style of phone? Are you just no because of certain features that are missing? Let us know in the comment section. And thank you very much for watching. Nick here up and you to master your technology. Be sure to be well and peace.